The next step up from writing for horns in unison or octaves is to harmonize them in thirds. And we can harmonize them in thirds lower or higher than the principal line. We can, of course, experiment with different instruments. And we're going to look at a variety of examples. And they're not mutually exclusive with playing in octaves or unison. We can mix and match the two. I'm going to focus on harmonizing in thirds in this video, but they can be mixed and matched. I'm going to start off with the same example as last video. And I've got the trumpet playing the melody note that we heard last time, and the alto sax is harmonizing it a third lower, and I have the baritone doing that little counter line. And halfway through, I left it go back to the unison doubling, just so you can get a sense of the different kind of color and flavor between the two. So let's look at the score as it's going. Here's again the principal pitch, and this one you can see is voiced lower. So there it's back in unison, and you can hear the difference. It's kind of a more powerful statement or impact, but it's all a different flavor that you have to work with. Now, the next example is that same thing, and I've flipped it around where I have the alto sax playing the main line and the trumpet harmonizing a third lower. And you'll hear that that's got a different color as well. So let's look and listen to that. So depending which instrument is on top versus lower will also greatly affect how the brass arrangement is going to sound. Now let's look at one more example based on this same motif. And here I'm harmonizing a third higher rather than a third lower than the actual pitch of the line. So again, this is our main motif or riff. And here I'm doing it a third higher, but transposing it down an octave because it's tenor sax. So this is starting on G, and this is going to start now a third higher, which will be B flat. And there it is, but down an octave. So let's see if we can look at these two together. And there they are. And we'll look and listen. So I think for this specific little riff, I like this orchestration of it the best. So you got to experiment with which instruments are harmonizing and in which direction. Now let's look at another musical example here. I've done up a different motif here. And here I'm going a third lower and down an octave again. And I'm again doing it with tenor sax and trumpet. And I've got chords here. You can see what they are. They're B flat, D, then E flat and F. And that's just repeated. And let's just listen to the main line to start with. And there I'm using the fall articulation for the upper note, just for a little bit of dramatic effect. And if we look in the graphic editor, you can see there are my key switch notes there, just a regular articulation, and then the fall at the end. And I'm switching between staccato and legato notes. So let's close that up and unmute the harmonized part, and let's look at the two of them together. So that works nicely in that range with those instruments. Let's look at another example here. And this example is a new chord progression. I've just spelled it out here. It's alternating between C and B flat, C and B flat, and then goes to E flat F, E flat F. And here I'm using some different instruments. I'm using the flugelhorn, which we haven't looked at in the last video yet. It's kind of like a bigger trumpet, and it's got a softer, warmer sound. And I'm doubling it here with alto sax. So Trumpet and tenor are nice, hard, sort of biting, aggressive, good for staccato parts that you really want to stick out. This one, again, I'm focusing on brass ranging, so it's going to stick out by the nature of what I've done here, but it's a softer kind of sound using the alto and the flugelhorn together. So here's the main line, and you can look at it over here, and I'll just solo this one for you by muting 
the top one for the moment, and you can hear what it sounds like. So I'm using swells, and if we look at the graphic editor, you can see there are the key switch notes there. It's a nice sforzando effect, meaning there's a strong attack at the beginning of the note, and then it drops down and swells up for the remainder of the duration, and then short articulations for these short notes, then back to the sforzando. So it's alternating between them. So let's look at both of these parts together. There we go. And let's listen. little fall at the end there again just to change the articulation and make the part a bit more realistic and let's move on to the last example that I have over here and in this one I've got a kind of shuffled type of feel and what I'm doing here is using flute and flugelhorn so again it's a softer kind of sound and I'm playing the main line down here on the flugelhorn and I've transposed it down an octave from where I originally wrote it and that's due to experimenting with different combinations to see which instruments it worked best on. And I liked it in the range down lower here. And here I'm doubling in thirds above, but I'm also mixing in some unisons. So again, you don't have to exclusively use either thirds or unisons or octaves. They can be mixed and matched, of course. So let's listen to this with just the main line, and you'll see in here what this sounds like as is with just the single line. So what's interesting about this is it's using non-core tones. Now the chords here are B flat, G minor, E flat, and F. So we're starting on the second degree. Here we're starting on the fourth degree. And here we're starting on the sixth degree. So they're non-core tones and they're interesting to harmonize. They're, they give a different color when you're working with these kinds of non-core tones. So let's now unmute the flute part and let's get the two of these to display together. And let's listen. There are the unisons. So this is a little bit of an unusual example for a couple of reasons. First, conventionally, when you create harmony parts, you create it below your actual principal line. In this case, I've harmonized above it. So the flute is on top. And that's what we hear mainly, and that's the harmony, not the melody. So that's a little unconventional. And the other thing is when you're mixing octaves and harmony, you often have the short notes playing together in the octaves or unisons, and then the long notes are the ones that are harmonized for effect. Here I've done the opposite, where I've harmonized the short notes in thirds, and I've left the long ones in octaves. So the takeaway here is that conventions are great, and using them unconventionally can also be great. See you for more in the next video.